due to an existence of an atmosphere which facilitates to sustain the lives our planet earth occupies a prominent and a special place amongst the millions of other planets in the universe the gorgeous natural environment around us has been formed and is been protected purely because of the excessive services rendered by the atmosphere of the earth atmosphere is a treasure we were gifted by the nature Oxygen, which is the most important gas for living, plays the pivotal role among all gases that contain in the atmosphere and it is 21% of the total volume of the all atmospheric gases. Though the percentage of ozone, which is formed from oxygen molecules, is minimum compared to the volume of oxygen, it has a crucial place because ozone is a basic element that immensely contributes for the sustainability and for survival of living beings on our planet. Oxygen molecules, which are at the upper atmosphere, absorb energy of the solar radiation and produce ozone. The formation of ozone is taking place in the region of 10 to 50 kilometers above the sea level in the stratosphere and spread as a layer in between 20 to 30 kilometers. This layer absorbs 97 to 99% of the sun's high frequency ultraviolet rays which is potentially damaging to the life forms on the earth. Therefore, it acts as a protective shield, safeguarding all living things on the earth from the harmful ultraviolet rays. Because of irresponsible activities of the mankind that had been carried out during the last century and so on for the sake of their comfort livelihood, this protective shield has been facing a huge threat of diminution. Especially with the chlorofluorocarbons that were used in refrigerators, air conditioners and also many other halogenated substances like bromofluorocarbons that have been used for other purposes have started causing depletion of this much precious ozone layer. As a result of the depletion of the ozone layer, more and more harmful rays are coming to the earth's surface and causing health problems such as skin cancers and eye cataracts. These harmful rays further aggravate this disastrous situation by causing adverse effects to the biodiversity and natural environment on the earth. As a result of the scientific evidences that gave an alarm of ozone layer depletion to the world, attention of the global community was drawn on this adverse environmental issue. Thereby, a convention was held in Vienna in 1985 to discuss and to take precautionary measures and finally established Vienna Convention on Ozone Depleting Substances. Later, in order to implement regulations and policies to protect ozone layer, the Montreal Protocol was established on the 16th of September 1987 with the participation of nearly 50 countries initially and presently 196 countries are parties to the Montreal Protocol. Montreal Protocol is considered to be the most successful environment treaty to date. Sri Lanka too became a party to the Montreal Protocol in December 1989 and it plays an active role in restricting the use of ozone depleting substances and successfully completed phasing out of most of the substances compliant with the regulations and policies of the Montreal Protocol. The Montreal Protocol Unit, which currently operates as the National Ozone Unit of the Ministry of Environment, was early established under the Ministry of Environment, Transport and Women Affairs in 1994. Through this strong framework of administration, Sri Lanka was able to manage, control and phase out ozone depleting substances by implementing various projects and operations. Sri Lanka's success in phasing out ozone depleting substances effectively has been recognized globally as well. At the 20th anniversary celebrations of the Montreal Protocol in 2007, Sri Lanka was awarded the prestigious Implementers Award of the Montreal Protocol among the other parties to the protocol. After successfully implementing the process of gradually phasing out all aggressive ozone depleting substances, Sri Lanka is getting ready for the gradual phase out of the use of hydrochlorofluorocarbons. Under the leadership and guidance of present President of the Vienna Convention and Minister of Environment, 
Honorable Anurpre Darshan Yapa, the Ministry of Environment launched the HCFC Phase Out Management Plan for Sri Lanka on the 31st of March 2011 in Colombo under the patronage of the Honorable Minister, delegation of UNDP, UNEP and with the participation of stakeholders of HCFCs. We are ready to engage positively for the next challenge in phasing out HCFCs completely by 2030 and thereby to protect the ozone layer to lead minimizing the climate change calamities. Are you ready to be a partner with us in this progressive task?